Duties Table Tobacco Products Amendment Bill, and I do so knowing that four years ago, almost to this day, our family had a call from Perth to say that my father-in-law was going to die quite quickly of lung cancer. Our reaction was dismay but not disbelief. You see, he was a very heavy smoker with that horrible distinctive cough that when we stayed with him woke us up each morning and made me feel quite sick. And we always wondered whether in fact it would be just a matter of time. He was 63 years old when he died. Far, far too young. As a former nurse, and yes, nurses also fall into that group of higher rates of smoking. As we've heard um, the member Kevin Haig speak of various groups, nurses are also in there. I'd nursed many people whose health had been disastrously affected by smoking. You see, just watching and seeing it happen didn't stop the nurses. But nursing a family member, as I had the privilege of doing, in his last days of life, only nine months after we heard of his illness, left a lasting impression on me and left me with a resolve to listen carefully and seek evidence of ways to change the incidence of smoking and reduce the number of new smokers. I want to now pause to congratulate the Honourable Tarana Turia because I feel sure these measures will save lives and not every minister can stand in this House stewarding a bill through the House knowing that that is likely to be the case. As the leading cause of preventable deaths, I'm proud to be standing here tonight in the knowledge that some people are also less likely to start smoking because of these planned changes in excise. And I now want to just briefly comment on the regulatory impact statement, which makes a couple of pertinent points in relation to the decision to actually bring this bill to pass. Taxes Tax on the two types of tobacco were last equalised, that's the um, loose tobacco and cigarettes, in 1995. So we're looking at quite a part passage of time since then. In addition, the decline in tobacco consumption has stalled and smoking prevalence is declining but slowly. The current tobacco control programme of regulation, health education, cessation and taxation is holding rates steady but is not achieving the declines necessary for sustainable health gains and reductions in tobacco related costs to society and the economy. So this is what we see. This is the reason we must take the action that we are here tonight. This morning, a newsletter arrived in my inbox, and it was from the it was the tobacco control update. I studied it closer later in the day, knowing what was ahead of us today. And the newsletter actually pointed out, of course, not knowing what was happening tonight, that the budget would provide an opportunity for the government to put up tobacco excise tax. There have been many calls for that to happen, and I feel sure that those who read that newsletter, subscribe to that newsletter will be smiling this evening. There were calls from the Royal New Zealand College of General Practitioners and the Public Health Association, both printed in that newsletter. But also buried in the newsletter was a link to some research, some research that had been carried out in Thailand by the Department of Health Education and Behavioural Sciences. They, they used 504 regular smokers and looked at what changes in their behaviour would happen if there was a tobacco tax increase. The results were statistically quite significant, with 9.7% of the smokers actually quitting, and they had a 48% reduction in the numbers of cigarettes smoked a day for other members of that group. Now, they concluded, unsurprisingly, that in fact a tax increase was beneficial for government revenue, and I'll get to that a little later, but it, that it also affected the behaviour of daily smokers. But they did also say that it had to continue to go up continuously, to prov and there had to be a provision of sufficient cessation services to respond to the need to quit smoking. In other words, for those who suddenly got it, they needed some help. We have heard some debate ventured in this House that if we truly believe in reducing the number of health related, the amount of health related harm from smoking. The Honourable Sir Roger Douglas suggested we put it up 600 per cent. He did express concern that we were seeking to control the personal habits of citizens when in fact 
their personal responsibility should prevail. I can understand the genesis of that argument, but it's not that black and white, as anyone who has tried to, commit smo uh, to quit smoking understands. So when a person decides to take that life-changing um, move and, and stop smoking, all of the ducks need to be in a row, all of the planets need to be in alignment, and all of the excuses need to be philosophically exhausted. So this not insignificant change in the excise might be the final duck, might be the last planet in the line, and might actually also exhaust that last excuse. And I certainly hope so for many smokers. And for many young people, I hope they look at the cost associated with smoking and decide not to start. I hope they plan instead a holiday, the purchase of a car, putting money away for a house, perhaps paying off some money if they have a mortgage. I hope, in fact, they recognise that they should enhance their future rather than seriously shorten it. But when the decision time actually arrives, when that smoker's mind is open, ducks in a row, planets in alignment, whatever, then the challenge for us is actually to support that person to quit. I'm really proud that since the national government came into power, there's been an enormous increase in the subsidisation of nicotine replacement and use of the same, because it's all very well to actually do that. But as the Minister said, yes, well, it's gone up from $463,000 being spent back in March 08 because people were using it, and now it's actually more than a million for the month of March. More than a million. That's pretty stunning. And it was 463,000 back in March 08. So that is quite a huge amount. But it's not just about subsidising. You've got to make sure people actually use it. So since September 09, that nicotine replacement, it could be lozenges, patches or gum, are available on prescription and the cost is now down to $3 for that prescription. So that gives you two months supply. That's an important part of achieving what we want to achieve here. The government has committed $57 million to tobacco control and smoking cessation, not an insignificant amount of money, but it is a small amount compared to the cost. The cost to New Zealand society, to the taxpayer of tobacco-related harm, the estimates are $1.9 billion. In fact, the revenue is nowhere near that. The revenue has been $1.1 billion. With these changes, that will go up to $1.3 billion. But it's still short of the cost. But actually, all of the members that have spoken in this debate, well, not all of them, but a lot of them have spoken about the loss of a, a family or whanau member, and that is not about money. That is the loss of a family support member, a mother or a father, sometimes a child, and it's also the loss of potential. And it's, and it's around lung disease, heart disease, stroke, um, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease and other cancers. This government has made quit smoking advice one of its six current health um, targets for those hospitalised. And I have to say, not all of the DHBs have been doing that well, and even my own South Canterbury DHB um, hasn't been doing so well in that. There's been a marked improvement in the last um, figures that have come out of that, but it is one of only six targets. In the past, we've perhaps had a multitude of targets and not enough Absolutely. concentration on a few, but this, in fact, is particularly important. I think these measures will save lives, but there are other measures, I repeat, must be put in place. The smoke-free ambassadors in my town who regularly come to see me and harangue me about one thing or another, I hope they're smiling tonight too. I hope they see that this parliament almost unanimously has a desire, a will, and is taking some action in the House here tonight. We've taken a very important step, one I'm proud of. Thank you.